Hi everyone, Frankie V from Frozen Sand with another Working with Power Tools episode where I demonstrate in real time some of the workflow techniques that I use day to day uh, working on Terra HD. And, into, and as always, I like to present these in some form of mini project form. And in today's episode, we're going to demonstrate how you can use 3ds Max to quickly stitch, uh, stitch up um, uh, some sort of level design. Uh, as part of the iteration progress and being able to take that over into uh, Unreal 4 and have a quick run around to see how things are kind of shaping up. Now, uh, as part of the old school way of doing things, the, um, the, the natural uh, tendency of being able to uh, doing level design is to pick up pad and start kind of sketching things out of how the environment is going to shape up. Uh, on the other flip side, if you do have 3D graphics uh, uh, skills, uh, be it uh, 3ds Max, Maya, Blender, uh, Hexagon is actually shaping up to be a pretty good uh, editing application, particularly for doing uh, small, um, let's say, detailed uh, map objects, as well as level editing. And of course, that would apply here, as that's what we're looking at as far as uh, level editing goes. So what's changed, of course, is uh, we've kind of thrown away the, the, the old uh, uh, notepad uh, idea of uh, sketching out your level initially and uh, or doing with Photoshop and so forth and doing things everything everything in real time as part of an iteration process now iteration has been around for quite a while as far as being able to build up uh, three-dimensional environments in general so uh, particularly in the area of architectural uh, all these elements are, are obviously made uh, beforehand as components as to being able to fit into the environment based on the clients uh, ideal of what their their design should look like uh, so if a client comes in and says uh, you know I want to do a shopping mall here's what I have and concept uh, they can take through iteration uh, weed out the actual design process uh, as, as a visual representation and of course transfer all that information later on over to blueprints but as, a, as opposed to outputting to blueprints obviously we want to create whatever's in three-dimensional space into Unreal 4 so we can use the same pathologies we can use the same iteration processes as to say, um, uh, X referencing in 3ds Max is, is is a compatible idea as part as uh, being able to create a source chain. We're not talking about source uh, source um, control here. We're talking about the ability to be able to move f um, components and elements from 3ds Max into uh, Unreal 4 within a confined uh, direct chain link between the two applications. In other words. Hopefully, uh, once you get into the habit of using it and you're comfortable, it becomes rather transparent as to process, the need to have anything else in between the two, so to speak. Now, uh, uh, as it would have it, uh, this features, uh, once again, ahead of the Unreal, <laughs> Unreal 4 curve, and that uh, uh, 3ds Max supports what's called a Sen 2. Now, a lot of applications have their own version of Sen 2, but they, th th the idea behind it is eventually all these programs will be able to send just stuff to one another uh, without intent as to things like how it needs to be stored and that kind of stuff so uh, as part of the iteration program pro process this is where this comes in throw the notepad away and uh, just kind of work uh, moving forward based on, on what I would consider uh, as a start as being digital doodling so to speak so uh, 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 a little less talk, a little less talking. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's the nature of uh, personal workflows. You have to talk about it a bit as to as to why you do things, not necessarily, but w the reasons why it's best practice to push a particular button. Okay, to start things off with, though, we do need to create some form of of companionship, uh, friendliness. Uh, say hello to our neighbor Unreal Four, as to being able to make sure that whatever we set up here conforms to how everything is set up there uh, so it's it's uh, that's the direction things are flowing so we have to set it up based on that need so in this case we want to maintain a relative uh, world scaling value that is uh, equal in uh, Unreal 4 which is one unit equals one centimeter so as far as setting uh, 3ds max up or any application in this case we'll just set up system unit set up one unit equals centimeter and that's it uh, we now have the ability to communicate with Unreal 4 based on its, its language of, of scaling within relative space uh, as for display unit scale, you can change it to more or less anything that you want because it's just a measuring tape. It's just a numeric value relative to, of course, one unit equals one centimeter. So we have established that to begin with. So how we read that out, you know, how many how many centimeters are there in a in a meter? How many centimeters are in a mile? It still comes back down to that safe base uh, world space unit of measurement. Okay, so we go okay, which brings us into our our second discussion as far as as requirements goes and that's real scale, relative scaling of objects various objects within three-dimensional space now um, 
we have benefit, of course, of a much larger, wider peripheral vision, but as far as three-dimensional space goes, our visual peripheral vision is rather limited to uh, to this overall size of the screen that you're working on, or uh, as into what's going on in, in with inside the box as uh, as related to uh, 3D, so to speak. So um, the perspective itself is is obviously a perspective of a two-dimensional plane defined by the monitor size. So, uh, things that uh, you can actually go out and measure something. So, if you want, because we're dealing with world, world's uh, actual physical world measurements as in the need to be able to have a means of establishing a value for things like physics, uh, lighting, and uh, cloth, certainly cloth simulations, then um, we can go out and just measure stuff. Uh, so, if you want a computer as a map object, measure a computer and make it that size as to uh, whatever visual scaling units that you're using. And, of course, it'll be uh, true to uh, as to that scale value. Uh, where things kind of get uh, kind of iffy is when you're starting to deal with things like video games, uh, not so much... Uh, uh, not so much environmental renderings for the purpose of pre-visualization, but uh, real-world uh, environments where you're actually running around with a gun and you're looking at, at the world through a perspective of the first or third-person player, then things tend to go kind of wacky as far as, uh, as uh, scaling uh, uh, relative to one another. So uh, a gun, you measure the gun in real-world values. By the time you put it into the game and you're playing around with the gun, it looks kind of like a stick. So it doesn't have that beefiness. So uh, as a habit, I generally like to scale things up by 10% uh, based off of, its, uh, off, off of whatever it is that I'm using as a base reference. So in this case, uh, the most logical thing to use as a base m uh, measurement is, of course, the player model itself. And, of course, the best form of uh, being able to uh, create a relative scale is to use the actual source directly uh, provided by uh, Epic, in this case, the Epic Skeleton Template, which is available for download. So if we go ahead and import that, I'm importing that by FBX off screen. And as you can see, this is the uh, Blue Man. But in actuality, this is Rocket uh, rocket Mannequin Mesh. Uh, <laughs> so um, that's its name. Its name is Rocket, not Blue Man. So um, this gives us a true representation of the source of, as provided by Epic as to a relative scale model uh, uh, in relationship to how we would need to create a a consistent uh, content uh, pipeline between um, 3ds max and how it will ultimately uh, re uh, create no problems once we're bringing it into unreal 4. so uh what we don't need is the skin solution because we're not doing any animations or anything like that so and then we'll do a control i and delete the skeletal mesh and uh, just uh i don't know if i have already stated but i'm going to try to make it have the state in all these videos that this is workflow video this is not to demonstrate how to push buttons so i do expect a certain degree of uh, expertise on your part as far as your weapon of choice goes so uh next thing we need to do of course is we have established uh, uh, a connection we have a a provided uh, resource from epic themselves as to relative scale of objects in the scene no more arguments no more no oh, well uh, uh, trying to figure that stuff out it is defined okay so we can create a box object uh, as part of our, our first step towards building a build material and once again it's an opportunity to validate our relative scaling because what we do know is that the uh, player model is 192 units tall so if we make our box that height we go to our front view stop that and go to wireframe mode you can see it's toe to head as far as um, our initial creation of our over material now i'm going to this is a, a procedural or parametric object but uh, it's time to kind of move on so we're going to convert that over to a poly object and i want to make this initially an exterior scene so i'll go ahead and take the top uh, sub object and and then take the exterior surfaces and uh and flip them over so that the back faces are called and the idea uh, the project is is to make an uh, initially to make an exterior exterior um, exterior uh, 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 environment uh, a map a layout the initial uh, building block so to speak but um, just so you are I'm going to initially I'm just going to intentionally screw things up just so <laughs> we have something to work with on the back end of this so this gives us uh, our initial our initial uh, form our initial uh, say first room so to speak so we'll add some height there we'll bring that up to say 300 uh, 300 units or 300 centimeters it doesn't matter and uh, we're going to select uh, uh, 
expand this out a bit give the guy some room uh, as far as volume of space and uh, bring that out and uh, working to what we're working towards is of course is our first iteration as far as getting this in and into Unreal 4 to create that first initial how do you do connection but as part of a how to do connection um, um, I'm going to talk about this uh, need once so I don't have to keep repeating it over and over again throughout the video but each time um, if you get closer to f to iteration completion in other words whatever you're building is this close to being finished um, you should make it a point to kind of uh, it's to reset any object that you have in your scene as to its uh, as to its local scale so that it matches it up to its relative scale because the scaling tool does weird things uh, you know you're talking about ununiform un ununiform scaling um, as well as uh, sub object editing where the object itself is no longer uh, current to its local scaling value now this is not so much of a problem too much of the time hopefully but it can cause problems in uh, applications that uses real world values because some applications will actually take the local value out as to the true size of the object and that's uh, calculated and reflected as part of any kind of other procedural type of uh, processes that it does so for example if you're using uh, procedural lighting uh, you're using a uh, uh, physics based uh, in engine driving physics or uh, class simulations anything that <coughs> is derived on a real world value can at times uh, uh, pull that uh, seed value from its local scaling value scaling so since uh, since the only time that the, that the, the uh, scaling of the object is true is in its <coughs> is in its param parametric uh, uh, condition upon creation, so since this is 192 uh, centimeters tall, uh, it doesn't know that I've changed the scaling actually to uh, 30 centimeters in height, or 300 centimeters in height. So we need to do, hit that with an X form to reset the local scale. So now it equals uh, whatever height or whatever this box is, and is defined by this little. little the outline that you can confirm that it indeed has occurred it also corrects th things like uh, face alignments and stuff like that but uh, you'll see that as uh, as time goes by particularly working with 3s max as to that being a problem so anyways moving forward um, we're going to now send out another iteration this time we're going to put uh, did we actually do an iteration uh, da, 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 da. I don't think so okay hold on um, I kind of lost track here no we haven't sent out an iteration so we're going to need to send out our first iteration so we're going to select everything in our scene export this export by selected now get that you get use of uh, um, exporting by selection because you can inadvertently send out the entire package as one big file and it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of scary when you do your first uh, uh, update okay so go ahead and Im export that out to FBX as our test uh, 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 subject and uh, we'll head over to to Unreal 4 and we're going to create a folder and I usually like to call these uh, uh, something that keeps uh, uh, you know don't use fancy terminology but term terms that are don't call this for example test whatever I just like to call it scrap because I know you know any folder I see that has scrap in it I can delete it at will because it's uh, it's just not that important so um uh yeah it's, it's a great way of doing it because I can just do a, a, a hard drive search and any folder that comes up says scrap I can just delete it not worry about it that's what it's there for okay so anyways uh, I have this off screen here don't want to have a peek at my hard drive so I'm just going to drag and drop that over as normal as a import uh, first thing we want to do is make sure that auto generate collision is turned off we don't need that right now and it's going to mess us up and of course we want import textures and materials just to make life easier and in it comes and we wait for it and obviously this is our first iteration so we're going to kind of drag that out into our scene and uh, do a quick drop in play test here and as you can see we can once again confirm our player model is actually the size of our proxy so we have definitely def we have definitely a a created the necessary um, relative scaling between uh, our, the two different uh, applications so this is one way to confirming it and it's based obviously on the um, uh, off the uh, model supplied by epic okay moving on um, we don't need this guy anymore now I'm just going to uh, uh, just kind of ignore him I like to keep the guy around because it, uh, you can uh, I've gotten in the habit of knowing the different scaling and, and so forth between one object and another but first iteration uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out of out of the scene and actually create create our, our working uh, space so to speak and I'm just going to throw on blade killers fabulously famous UV mapping textures uh, uh, texture she made up 
uh, which uh, shows up any kind of distortion and, and of course this, we have flip, flip norms and stuff like that really like this I actually have a modified version of this texture which has uh, is uh, more uh, PBR in nature uh, 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 so um, one of the things you want to do is make up a, an assortment of different types of materials that um, are let's say have a reflective type of quality to it because it really helps you with the lighting aspect of it i mean if you have a blank diffused wall it doesn't bounce light as nicely as say a pbr that has a uh, has a uh, two uh, parametric nature to it so anyways we're just going to take this and export by selected and uh, we're going to export that selected this our box 001 out and we're going to sh demonstrate our first iteration and uh, that is to go back over to unreal 4 and we'll just select our box here and we'll do a re-import actually it didn't work out the way i want because it didn't bring the material in so this is why we mess up of course as uh, part of the initial setup because we can just take this delete that out go back over to our file and then just do a re-import to establish our our needed materials as you can see we now bring that in and ta-da we have uh, we have our initial building material as far as iteration goes as well as we we've have established uh, relative scaling between the player model that uh, we have in 3ds max versus the player model that's in unreal 4 so that's locked in and uh, we're really mm, so, somewhat ready to start building stuff except for one thing um if we drop in of course we're running through walls so we've got somewhat of a problem there as far as uh, <laughs> using this for iteration processes um so uh easy enough to fix we'll just uh, bring that up into the editor uh, double click onto it brings this guy up and we'll just go down here change the default uh, use complex as simple and while we're at it we'll change the resolution to uh, 1024 uh you can actually go bigger if you want but 1024 should cut it uh a little, a little high <laughs> needs to say but uh, the practical reason behind that of course is our environment will do grow dynamically so once we start doing things like light mapping uh, layouts uh, proxy layouts just to kind of keep things nice and clean and tidy uh it's a good value to start with because then we don't have to change that each time we up the uh, the overall resolution of our of our layout as to um, size so that's uh that's done uh, if we hit play what do we got okay we can't get out of the box <laughs> we can't jump out of the box and, uh, and of course we have our proxy in place which means that uh, this little guy down here can actually go boom we don't need that anymore uh, i have uh i put in a, a skylight i like to work with the skylight because it lights everything up and uh, we don't have to mess around with uh with with anything else so you could put um, a material on this where the um the uh, the surface glows more or less so uh, we need a working light more than we need actually practical light so i'm not going to be doing anything as far as uh, re doing light rebuilds goes um it can be uh it can be uh, kind of twitchy at times and definitely causes problems trying to do a rebuild while we're recording and so uh, that gives us uh our starting point now we need to start um focusing a little bit more on next step as to uh, build uh don't know if i mentioned it uh, but this guy character uh, I usually keep it in the scene just to kind of make sure that things are relative to scale as far as doors and stuff like that goes uh, I'm pretty sure I did um, but we don't really need him to be around so we'll kind of mm, what should we do with him hide selection okay actually let's do something better let's uh, show a feature that uh, is part of the iteration progress uh, and you can see I already have him set up as uh, as a layer uh, as far as uh, bringing being imported is and we can turn him off as as far as the layer goes and then we can create and add selected objects and in this case this is going to be uh what did that just do okay that actually put it underneath the underneath the wrong place so we need to reselect that put that guy back under the default with the selection made we're going to select and create new layer and include the selection we're going to call this um layout and we can turn that off and on as we go along because uh, this comes in this is a handy little tip because as you start building things up you're going to be putting buildings and and, and detail parts in as to edit in place which are then converted over to um, excuse me over to component objects which are then brought in and kept as part of your core stock and inventory so um laying things out like this under layers keeps things sorted and uh I, you know you can as opposed to having everything pop in all at once okay so uh moving on uh let's uh sort of uh, bring mr mannequin back in again we have him on a layer obviously so we need him just to kind of create a relative uh scaling initial scaling as to uh, overall size so we'll take that take that 
and take that. I'm going to try keeping these down to a half an hour. We've got about another 10 minutes to just kind of uh, um, brush over a lot of the stuff. So things should start to pick up a little bit as to a completed project let's say okay so that gives us a good starting point as far as iteration goes so uh, let's go ahead and hide mr uh, mr rocket and off he goes and let's do another iteration just to kind of you know create a workflow habit export by selected layout test yes okay uh, over to unreal 4 import by layout re-import boom okay play test okay we're in and we're running around things are a little bit bigger Okay, not very interesting to walk around in the box. So, uh, next part of the iteration process, uh, I want to uh, create uh, a pathway that goes this way, this way, back this way, and then this way, and another one over here, pathway going this way, back this way, and back into here. So I have four exits out of a central area, and uh, and we'll rotate around into uh, into into another area. So that uh, should be enough to actually um, illustrate a lot of the tool usage. Okay, first tool use. Um, uh, preserve UVWs, good idea. That uh, that way you can move stuff around and not destroy your mapping. Uh, we'll do a quick connect, and uh, as you can see, we can move that over, and we'll create another loop, uh, connect, and move that over. Okay, so that gives us our wall surfaces for as a first extrude or extrusion from uh, from this environment, and then we'll do another connect here. But we'll use the parameter tool to actually increase the segments where you can kind of increase or de and move it slide it around now this is coming in handy because you can do snaps you can you, know, you can sort of line things up with uh, with uh, whatever grid that you're using for personally I don't use them I find that uh, um, well it's not really necessary these days okay next tool um, extrude let's look at the extrude tool which allows us to kind of push that out and we'll take this wall and we'll start by pushing that out so then we can kind of move this over a little bit that way and we can take that and move that over this this way and then of course by holding the shift key down we can then do a further extrude oh no nope, no nope, no nope. we can't do that with uh with faces sorry we can use the extrude to and oh, turn off back face ignore back facing another tool that we need to be worried about and we'll kind of extrude that out from there and then we can move that over there which then allows us to create another direction change there now let me show you another way of doing that as far as the extrude tool goes uh thing to be aware of it does tend to create a uh, back uh, a roof we don't want a roof this is going to be open environment so that's a, a maintenance thing that we have to be concerned about but bringing things back down again let's do things numerically so we can select those walls and then we'll just use the parameter for the extrude which is uh, a line on i start to use so well let's extrude that out keep going keep going keep going keep going okay um uh, okay as you can see it's done in centimeters so can that make once again we have a numeric value which we can create a high degree of accuracy as far as volume of space goes so that sort of sets up that pathway we'll do a plus that uh, extends that way out so uh, what's our next uh, next wall so as you can see this comes in handy because you can actually physically measure things out we'll do a plus and we'll select the other wall here uh, not that wall not that wall uh, ignore by back facing turn that on I thought I turned that on okay we'll select that wall and we'll select that wall and we'll bring that a little bit more out okay a little bit more in line um, okay I can mess around with the parameters a bit but what I'm going to do is switch things over to um, oops no uh, check mark okay I'm going to switch over to manual editing which is means I take that surface there and I want to get rid of that roof I get that out of the way so it's one oh no we'll keep that in there uh yeah okay um hmm, how do i want to how do i want to approach this okay you go you come uh play f follow the leader um and uh maybe i should have kept that face in there i got a little too ahead of myself okay uh select by element mm, no that's by edge okay we need by uh border okay there we go and we can pull that guy back and then we can take this and do an extrude not that I do well to doing it but uh, I really want to more or less just kind of show off some of the tool usage more than, than a direct to workflow as to getting a iteration done here iteration 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 okay I think we're going to be blowing the 30 minute mark but uh, oh well okay so uh, we'll leave that face in uh, we need to get rid of that guy and uh well what else do we have here okay so now we need to kind of weld in our cornering so we'll select by vertice do a weld 
and everything should kind of snap into uh, into place. Uh, we can uh, certainly optimize if we wish, um, but as a first iteration, uh, that will do the job that we need it to do. Uh, we need to get rid of some faces here. Obviously, uh, exterior scene. Get rid of the get rid of the roofing. You go boom. Okay, so we've opened up the top, and uh, we need to kind of map things out. As you can see, the uh, UV mapping's got kind of weird and wonderful and strange. And so we'll place a UV mapping on uh, on here. I'll do an open in editor, and we'll just do a flat layout as far as the map goes. Options, uh, mapping, flatten map. Okay, flatten that out. Uh, convert that over to an edible poly. And uh, we need to kind of uh, set up our, our light mapping channel. So that's uh, just simply going uh, down here to selection. UV mapping tool. We know that's planar map, so we moved that over to channel 2. We convert this over to an Edelpol poly, and that's ready to go, go rock and roll. We won't be doing any kind of um, uh, rebuilding in in, in, uh, in Unreal 4, obviously, because it, uh, it does take uh, take away time from uh, actually showing how to make this stuff work. Okay, export by selected. Obviously, we're ready for another iteration. Export by selection. Iteration, 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 and uh, over to uh, Unreal 4. And uh, we'll do a re-import and uh, take a bit of a run around. And there we go. Hmm, come along nicely. The world's bestest uh, map. Okay, we'll go do a play and kind of run around a bit. And as you can see, indeed, we've got a collision occurring. Because uh, we told it to be, uh, 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 obviously, a surface collision. Okay, so that uh, that part has uh, kind of turned out the way that we wanted it to. And uh, moving on to the other section, I'll show you another technique that can be used. Okay, uh, mm -hmm, 3ds Max. Okay, there we go. And uh, same thing. We need uh, a little bit uh, of uh, remodeling. You go. And uh, select by edge. Now, this is uh, actually an interest. This is the one I, this is the technique I generally use because uh, it gets rid of the roofing problem. But uh, it's also faster because you don't. Uh, you can use uh, freeforming uh, techniques in the way of holding down the shift key, and with uh, selection made, if you drag and drop, your edges will uh, pull out for you. So uh, we can go like that. We can go like this, and then we can uh, select these two edges here, and do a bridge. This tool here, bridge that, bridges the gap. Select by face, gun that out. Select by edge. Uh, do that. Uh, will loop work for us? No, we lost looping. Okay, so we can select that. We can do another extrude by edge, and then of course another another edge uh, um, formation to uh, um, uh, to uh, create that cornering. We can do a bridge, and then select that by edge face, and then uh, actually let's go over to here, and uh, we'll select that. Oops, come on, come on, come on, loop, 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 loop. We'll select that. We'll select that. And we'll select that, and we'll shift and drag it out, and then, hmm, not bad. That's okay. That's looking good. Okay, and we'll pull that out, and then we'll do a bridge. Again, uh, bridge using the bridging tool, and then we will select this face here, gone, and then by edge, edge selection, edge, edge selection, edge selection, edge. Selection over here, and selection here, and selection here, and then do a bridge, and that completes the whole hallway. Um, a little off uh, tool usage, uh, planar line. We select that. Uh, we are, uh, I think, in the X. Well, let's roll the dice. X, and then we realign to the X. We select these faces, and then we align those to the X, and uh, and then, uh, of course, that's all kind of corrected in the way we want it to be. Um, uh, boring map. Okay, so let's uh, kind of look at the idea of iteration. Uh, let's take this. So, well, we got to see how it looks for, of course. We got export by selected, and we're going to send that as a layout over into a 3D uh, into Unreal 4, and then <clears throat> bring that up. And uh, where are you? Hello, there you are. And do a re import of the asset. Uh, layout has, test has degraded tangent bases, which will result in incorrect shading. Okay. Uh, not a big issue. Uh, <coughs> just to explain the correction. Select by face. Select all. Clear all. Auto smooth. Problem solved. Okay. Uh, convert over to Edit Poly. Because I like to keep things nice and neat and tidy. And we'll go back to Unreal 4. Because I know that's fixed. And oh. No. Stop build. Stop build. Don't build. Don't build. Please don't build. Stop build. Thank you. Okay. Play. <coughs> uh, I don't want to waste time on builds. Okay, so now we're kind of running around. We're testing out our 
our space as to use. And uh, it doesn't look, as I said, relative scaling is kind of um, tomfoolery. It doesn't, uh, it's hard to uh, relate to uh, actual scaling. So <laughs> if you can make some prefabs like buildings and stuff like that, not much of an issue. But if you're doing the layout from scratch as to this particular process, as to iteration, because we don't bring the buildings in until later, but they can help you kind of um, set your initial uh, relative scaling so, so for uh, this example, we have a pretty good layout at the beginning, but you know it kind of looks more like an interior than it does an exterior. So we need to, you know, make a, a design decision change. So first of all, it's a, a rather boring. Eh, you change to a genome. Okay, so we change to a mass, change to an elbow poly. And that brings us back to square one. Okay, it's a rather boring layout. So let's uh, make some modifications. Um, let's say, for example, select those edges. We'll move this up. To kind of create a, a ramp uh, a ramp into and uh, this side over here of course we want to be a ramp down so we just kind of select those as as a design decision change and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, mm, let's do another iteration 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 make a change export it test it and uh, this time we should be able to bring that in with no errors do, 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 do. Okay, where are you? There you go. Uh, import, uh, re-import. Uh, yeah, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, play. Uh, an error that I'm not going to worry about right now. All right, so we can run up our ramp. Run, run down. And uh, go over here. Run down. These could be stairways. And uh, as you can see, we can start moving things out. Note, note, note. But um, unfortunately, as far as an environmental design, remember, I, well, I should have said at the beginning, I'm going to make an intentional mistake. In this case, our design is obviously not fitting of an exterior type of design pathway. But uh, as what the saying goes, if you if you got lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to roof this. Now, the best way and the easiest way I found that is, of course, is the floor is equal to the ceiling. As, as far as building the proxy. This, of course, um, will be the last iteration uh, as far as uh, as workflow goes. As uh, we are going to finish things off. I think I've shown the basic of basics as far as tool usage goes. So, uh, obviously, the, uh, learn your tools. This is definitely a lot faster than it would be if um, if we were trying to build everything by brushes. Clone to element. Uh, you probably, all, hopefully, already know what I'm going to be doing. I'm taking my uh, my initial design and simply just going to convert it over to an interior. So uh, we'll do a weld threshold up. Uh, make sure that everything's kind of dropping down. So uh, looking for open edges. And uh, back to our perspective view. Uh, let's clean up the mess here as far as UVW goes. Once again, it's just a, a, a layout. So we're not really too overly concerned about. Uh, things as to th impact for example so we'll just do a quick down and dirty mapping layout and uh, set that out uh, by face okay and we'll convert this over to an edible poly uh, then we'll, we will um, put on one more UV mapping just to kind of finish things off now we're getting let's say for example we are we are on the borderline of finishing it up and we want to maintain uh, a consistency in the quality for example okay move that over uh, do a convert to poly and then a last reset check it out yeah okay our scaling is going to be corrected and uh, we'll convert this over to an edible poly once again and uh, output our first uh, our hopefully our last of exporting uh, export selected uh, how it goes our last iteration and uh, we'll go over to uh, Unreal 4 do it or re-import as to the layer as to what we have as far as uh, uh, our environment goes and we have an internal sci-fi environment that's uh, we can get our head through uh, obviously uh, collision is kind of bunked not bad not bad at all you know the bestest map ever Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a shot at this. For some reason, when I try to do a lighting build, um, <laughs> Unreal 4 likes to crash when I'm doing when I'm recording. So uh, we'll give it a go. And keep our fingers crossed. I'm going to have a sip of coffee here, if you don't mind. Unprofessional, but hey, at least I'm not smoking. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, drum roll, please. Uh, building. Okay, lighting. 80. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, when I hit 80, it's usually when it starts to decide whether it's going to want to crash or not. Come on. Yeah, it's taking too long. It's going to crash. There's uh, obviously some sign, something going on here that's a bit of an issue. But I've done this so many times now that uh, I know it works and it uh, works the way it's supposed to. Uh, it could be because I'm using a 1024 light maps. <laughs> so um, it's uh, it's taken a little bit to kind of figure that out, my guess. <clears throat> but hey, we'll see. Maybe it's a mistake to use it. I use 1024 quite a bit. Uh, too much talking, you know. <laughs> Obviously, this is going to crash. Uh, I'm almost pretty sure and certain it's going to. Come on. Come on. I mean, it's so simple. It's so simple of a map. Encoding. Okay, come on. Come on. You can do it. Be a girl. Yes. Okay, we didn't crash this time. Uh, obviously. Oh, no. No. Stop. Stop. Okay, see? This is the kind of thing that happens when you go off plan. Okay, so we got... Uh, oh, hmm, not bad. Okay, so... Anyways, um, I'm getting it, starting to get into wanting to play around territory. So uh, I'm going to end this up. Uh, we're a little over, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, overall, uh, I think we've uh, more or less covered everything I think that should be covered as far as, uh, as uh, doing your SketchUp work in uh, 3ds Max.